Hello, welcome to another Pen Talk. Uh, thanks for watching. Today we're going to look at an American manufacturer of pens that uh, probably produce the most amount of pens of any uh, American manufacturer. Those of you familiar with fountain pens uh, probably recognize this. This is the Estabrook Model J. Uh, this video is going to explore as much as I can with the pens that I have, um, how Estabrook started into the pens, uh, what they evolved into, and also hopefully give you some incentive um, to maybe start collecting these pens, which are very affordable, uh, very easily found, uh, very easy to repair and fix. I have not found any uh, that I cannot bring into working order. I want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers, uh, Red Falcon. One of the early subscribers, very active in the comments, and uh, he mentioned about looking at Estabrook pens. So I knew I had a few of them in my collection, so that kind of motivated me, and it took me into um, reading about them, learning about their history, and then eventually the video. So to all you viewers out there, uh, your comments are greatly appreciated, and you never know what it might stimulate me and encourage me to do. So keep them coming. Hope you enjoy the videos. So what we have here is the Model J, which started in about 1949, 48, 49. Uh, these are the major colors that they came in. You have the traditional black, blue, red, green, silver, and copper or brown. Uh, these pens all look very good. They work very good. All the hardware, the metal hardware on here is um, stainless steel. So there's very little corrosion, very little wear. You don't have that gold-plated brassing that you experience with a lot of vintage pens. And these pens can be found in working order uh, on eBay for about $20. Um, if you look around, you can probably snipe one for less than that. Uh, you can also buy them in groups and bunches. And so for what you would normally spend for a inexpensive modern pen, you can acquire a little bit of American history and what I think is is quite a nice looking pen. I, all of the acrylic colors are very vibrant. They're all varied so no two of the colored pens are going to look the same. The sunlight hopefully brings out the color here and the texture these have been cleaned and polished by me. It, it didn't take a lot of effort to do that. And some of these pens I uh, acquired or had in my collection. So therefore, it, it wasn't uh, an effort to bring them into working order. They all take a number 16 sack, and it's relatively easy to replace that. And the other feature that Estabrook has throughout their fountain pen line is they have screw-in points. And they made a large variety of points. Uh, we'll discuss some of those points from the uh, ones that I have. And we'll maybe determine when you do uh, hopefully attempt to acquire one of these. You'll also be aware of the points that are available. And maybe get one with a nib that uh, is to your liking. Um, this is just uh, their copper pen. Which I think probably is the more interesting and unique color scheme. Uh, certainly a little bit of a different color than you're normally seeing. Estabrook uh, kept these colors going for 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, there's a wonderful book that I acquired uh, from uh, Pat Paul Hoban, The Fountain Pens of Estabrook. It's a small book, uh, relatively affordable. I picked it up from uh, the author on eBay. And I like studying the history and understanding a little bit about the pen. So Estabrook started making steel points, and they only made steel points. Their first pens uh, were desk pens. They're well known for their desk pens. And this one I actually enjoy quite a bit. It's called a uh, dripless. You can see it's a classic feed. Uh, it's hollow in here, and when you dip it in, it, it pulls up a lot of ink. And these are also the ones that you could keep in an inkwell on your desk. These are a little bit uh, newer desk pens, which were probably made in the 50s. This is their classic design. As you can see, they had just a red or clear acrylic, so you could have different nibs or different inks. Uh, these are lever fill, very similar to the levers that you'll find on the uh, J models. 
and also they have the same uh, replaceable nibs. So we'll just take a quick look at this. So what you do is you just unscrew the nib, as you can see very easy. And all these nibs uh, are the same. You can move them from pen to pen. Uh, that makes it also unique from a collecting viewpoint. So we'll explore some of the other nuances of these pens and hopefully uh, get you interested in what they can do and, and bring joy to your writing and your collecting experience. I wanted to show you um, what an eBay buy of Esther Brooks could be like. These are uh, three Esther Brooks I just received today. I uh, think I won the auction Wednesday or Thursday last week. The three of them were $60, which I think is a good buy, 20 bucks a piece. Um, I got them for a lot of different reasons, but one of which, uh, the first pen here is a transition model. As you can see, no jewel at the end of the barrel. Uh, beautiful green, a green that you'll see in some of the later pens, and of course a jewel at the top. I mean, this is in excellent condition. Uh, if you take a look at the nib, You'll see it has a little bit of ink on it. I mean, I'm going to clean these up. I'm not concerned. Esther Brooks are very easy to refurbish and restore. Take a quick look at the second pen, which is a blue pen. And this is uh, an LJ, which is the smaller version of, sorry, uh, not the LJ. This is kind of the smaller version, both in diameter and in length. I have a, a pencil that this will go with. The pen for the pencil is missing the bottom jewel. And as we take a look at it, you can also see uh, it has an interesting nib on it, which I enjoyed. Uh, two of these pens have very nice nibs, which uh, suppose they have a little bit of give and flex to them. But as you can see, the, the plastic and the resin just really works really uh, well in these pens. And the third one is the gray model. There's a couple different models of gray or silver. And as you can see, it is in excellent condition also. As we take a look at it, uh, it also has the 9,000 nibs are <clears throat> the more highly quality nibs. They have uh, a hard material, maybe uh, not iridium or something similar to it. As you can see, the pen has ink in it. So I will clean these up and we'll look at them later when I look at the whole collection. I wanted to show uh, consistency and variation. Uh, as you can see, these are three of the green model J. Estherbrooks. Uh, they all have slight variations to their coloring, but I think all three of them are very interesting and very enjoyable. Uh, again, the consistency and the quality of Estherbrook pens was one of their main traits, and that's why uh, a lot of people like them and enjoy them today. Now we look at a collection of a color which has had a few different names, uh, gray, silver, smoky gray, dawn silver, those types of things. I don't think Estherbrook really had a, that colorful marketing names. I think they called them gray. Uh, we'll look at some of the ads a little bit later on. But again, you can see how consistent they are. So two of these pens are LJs, which are the smaller version. They're uh, a little bit thinner along the section, uh, a little bit shorter in length, about a three-eighths of an inch shorter. But these colors are still very, very interesting, very unique. Uh, again, the patterns vary a lot between the pens. But one thing they all have in common is that Renew nib assembly that can easily come out and come in. And uh, as you can see, very consistent quality as we've seen with all the Estherbrooks. Let's take a look at another color that they were very popular with is blue. And we're also now showing the pencil form in uh, this series. And here is the J and LJ models. Uh, that blue is just very interesting like all the other colors that they have. Here we see a historical perspective. The smaller pen in the front was referred to as the dollar pen. This is one of the first mass produced fountain pens that Esther Brooke made. What we'll do is we can compare it to this probably 20 years difference between these two pens. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of similarity in the color and the material that she used to, to make them. And the other thing, uh, you can see the clip is done a little bit differently. You have Esther Brooke there in the top. You have some cutouts in the clip, but nothing that says Esther Brooke in the clip. 
And on the base of the pen, you have uh, the Estabrook name, but without the registration. If we look at the newer pens, you'll see the registration that's there. Hopefully that comes through. And the other thing, as we mentioned before, the, uh, the nibs were very consistent and they just unscrew. So this nib here can be used in the same pen that was made uh, 20 years later. In discussing the history of Esterbrook pens, um, here are uh, examples of a transition model and the double jewel model. The transition model is shown here and here. And the difference is at the end is just a flat end. There's no what is commonly referred to as a jewel like there is in the top of the pen. So that's called the transition pen, which preceded the J model, the LJ, and the SJ. As you can see, this has what is called a jewel, but it's just basically a plastic insert uh, with a metal ring around it. And again, a similar thing at the top. The other difference, which I think will come out very clearly with these black models, is the Esterbrook that's engraved in the barrel. The uh, double jewel ones have the R for the uh, registration and the previous ones, the transition ones, uh, do not have that marking. One of the ways to uh, date an Esterbrook pen is to take a look at the engraving that's on it. So let's take a look first at the Dipless pen. And let's find the writing on it. As you can see, this just says Esterbrook Dipless pen. Then we go to the Dollar pen which has R. Estabrook and Company. So this dates this pen to the 30s. And then we look at the transition pen, which looked at before, which just has Estabrook made in USA. And then when we go to the J series, which is the mid uh, 1940s, we see Estabrook with the trademark and that stays consistent throughout the rest of Estabrook's history. One of the things Esterbrook was known for were their renewable nibs or their interchangeable nibs and the fact that they made a number of them. So here's an ad from uh, 1948, which shows some of the many nibs that they made and shows how they wrote with them. Some of these nibs I have and we'll take a look at how they write. Here's another ad. It was about 1953, and this one was in color. So you get to see some of the different colors of the pens, but also they are certainly, um, <clears throat> you know, expanding on the fact that they have this renewable nib, and then you also see that they did make a pen with a metal cap. There's another ad from 52. Again, this one is black and white, but the main thing of the ad is pushing their different ways to uh, have you different points and the fact that you have a choice. And last but not least is an ad for, another ad from 1952. And again, as you can see, there's a number of different nibs here and they are certainly promoting how they can be interchanged. I'm going to give you a link to um, a website which has all of the nibs on it listed and I'll also list the nibs that I have and we'll see what we can do with the writing samples. For the first writing sample, we're going to use this transition Esterbrook. This is the first pen that I inked up in my collection and started writing with. It's a 2556 nib, which Esterbrook says is for fine writing. Classic design, long tines. I put uh, Noodler's uh, black in here because for the black pen I thought that would be appropriate. And the first thing that you notice is this nib is unbelievably smooth. The other thing I've noticed about this nib and other Esterbrook nibs is it has a sweet spot which is absolutely beautiful but off of that sweet spot it can be a little scratchy. So again they promote this as fine writing and I would say it's more of a medium line this pen originally had the 155 Greg nib in it, and I was not happy with that at all. The 1000 series nibs do not have any tipping material on them, so they tend to be a little scratchy. 
Continuing on with different Estherbrook nibs. This is one that I bought. I just bought the nib. It's a 9314 medium. And they consider this, they call it relief. As you can see, it's uh, pretty much of a larger kind of a stubby oblique. Uh, a little bit more evidence of tipping material on this nib. So this is an And this nib is more challenging to write with than any of the other ones. Again, it has a unique sweet spot to it. If you hit that sweet spot, it's very, very easy to use. But that's kind of typical of italic nibs. I do happen to like them, but they are challenging. Next, we're going to look at a 2048 nib. Hopefully, we can get the camera to focus on it. This is a little bit more unique. You can see the cutouts there on the side. This nib is supposedly a medium flexible nib. The 2000 series does have some tipping material on it. It's not a lot. They certainly didn't overdo it. As you can see, it's a little bit of a kind of an oblique italic style nib. So let's take a look at this. Not quite as smooth as the 2556, which I think you can hear. I mean, it is an interesting nib. I do enjoy it. You can see you do get some line variation out of it fairly nicely. So that's a look at a different type of nib. And uh, lastly, we'll look at uh, what might be called the Holy Grail of Esterbrook nibs. This is the 9128, which is called a fine flexible. Uh, as you can see, it, it's not quite as cut out as the uh, 2048 was, but it does have a finer point to it. And I would say that this also has a very unique writing style. Uh, with all the Esther Brooks that I've played with, it has a definite sweet spot. If you hit that, it's, it's beautiful. And as you can see, you can get some decent line variation out of it with just a little bit of pressure. So hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, overview of Esterbrooks. Uh, it's uh, a hard pen to get to know. There's a lot of fountain pen books out there that don't even mention Esterbrooks. So uh, if you find these interesting pens and they're affordable, uh, grab yourself one and experiment. Enjoy. Hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, delve into uh, some American history. So may all your writing experiences be pleasurable and may you have many. Bye.